Greetings, friends, and welcome to the Federation's Most Wanted, a Blake 7 podcast. I'm the Preacher 711, and I'm on a mission to seek, locate, and interview fans from across the Blake 7 fan community. Um, thrilled today to be joined by Martin. Martin, hi. Hello. I am, I am sought and located. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been talking about this for a while, and it's, you know, we finally got there. You know, it's a, on, on my head, that was that we, we've been a bit delayed, but. Martin, great to have you because, you know, you're all over the Blake 7 this. You know, you're at the moment, you're going to be popping up in the, the Vindictus audio. You're in the new Blake 7 annual. I know. Stuff. I, I don't know where it's all come from. I mean, it's it's, it's madness. It's just, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've I've been a fan since, you know, I was in short trousers um, and went through the whole thing, I guess, like a lot of people do of UK gold, the UK gold wilderness years. Yeah. Where I used I used to literally I mean it used to be on it used to be on like at six in the morning on UK Gold, didn't it? If you remember. Yeah. I, I remember on, the like, adverts. Do you remember how exciting they were when the trailers yeah. with Darrow and stuff on were yeah. out? Yeah. It was yeah. it was cracking. But it but I mean my, my wife thought I was insane um for getting up at six AM on a Sunday morning <laughs> to watch some rubbish old sci fi show, right? Yeah. <laughs> From the nineteen eighties. Yeah. And this was the late nineties, I guess. And I remember Angels. You remember Angels used to be on yeah. before Blake Seven, um, and yes, I had a video recorder, so I could have like recorded <laughs> it. But that, just, you know, there's that thing of like you like to watch it go out live, right? Yeah. Even with like things like Doctor Who today, when it's on, I, I like to go and watch it live. So, <laughs> that's yeah. what it was. so so is that when Blake Seven came into your life originally? Then was was it back in the day a little bit, or was it just the UK Gold Bill? Back in the day, my first Blake's memory is of the Liberator covered in fungus exploding. That is my earliest memory. Nice. Um, I've got a similar Doctor Who earliest mem memory. And I worked, I must have been five and being terrified of the Fenderlene from Image of the Fendal. Mm. I, I, I remember that and like literally behind the sofa. But no, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my first Blake's memory is, uh, is of the Liberator meeting its end sadly but it was awesome wasn't it like, oh god oh it my was god, look at that yeah all my Irvin's um, work's been blown up <laughs> <laughs> i mean i just love the, the darrow turn away cheeky smile at the end i love everyone sort of walking past him with faces like thunder and he just turns and does like yep. that knowing yeah yeah that was terminal that, yeah. you're oh. that was that's knackered that is <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And, and you know, when when you look back at Blake Seven, you know, what I always ask people, what what series are you? What's the series that most resonates with you? I think because I was uh I guess when the show started in 1979, I was seven. So these these memories are, are dim and very distant. Um so I think that the reason that I, I love season D, and it is season mm. D for me so much, is because it's it's it burns brightest in my memory because I remember watching it. Um, you know, when I when I was, you know, when it first went out, when I was a wee lad. Um, and I remember I can I know people uh listening can't see this, but behind you, Neil, is a clip gun and my eye mm. keeps wandering to it on your on your yeah, shelf. Yeah. Look at that. I want Look that. Look at that. Um, it's good, be isn't it? Because that was the one of the things about season D is that it introduced Scorpio, clip guns, yeah. all that good stuff. It, it was all it was a little bit of a mini reboot, wasn't it? Um, and Slave, I loved Slave. Um, he, he kind of looked like a he looked more Star Wars y than Zen mm. did. I mean, Zen was more alien, right? But yeah, Slave looked cool. And to me, Scorpio is the Falcon of Blake Seven, isn't it? It's a it's an old beaten up rust bucket, yeah. but once you've got a photonic drive in it, boy, does she go right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, suddenly uh, she sounds like a Ford Capri. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's a she's a, a Capri gear um, with with Del Boy at the at the wheel, um, but <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that that's it. So it is season D for me very much. I mean, it's got its ups and downs like every season, but but um, and what you know, what a climax, right? What a climax! It's, what a climax! And it would have been amazing to see if there'd been a season E, you know with kind of I mean gold is kind of often touted as maybe the bit of a template for what the see the series could have become a little bit more like isn't it mm. in, in the in the future with them being a little bit more or less freedom fighting freedom fighting and more about you know 
privateering i guess and yeah heist of the week make, yeah yeah that's right would, i mean would, that would have been cool i mean maybe just as a season up you know uh, you know perhaps they were going to try and raise some money to do something so they needed to you know get because we don't really ever explore the world of business and commerce in blake seven you know like you know, not in the same way as like in star wars for example mm. you've got you've got there is a kind of commercial background to to star wars isn't there it, you know I mean, yeah. which appeared in the in the in the prequels, love them or hate them, but you know you had the whole thing with the trade federation and the and the banking guild and all of that stuff, and it, we don't really ever touch on that very much in uh, in Blake's. So um, I mean, although I've been working on another uh, fanfic story um, called Ordeal, and that I, I wanted to like introduce a space Elon Musk <laughs> into <laughs> into Blake Seven and see and see what throw that character in and nice. put him up against Avon and what would happen. Oh, right. So, uh, so I've written that. It isn't anywhere. I haven't published it anywhere because I was thinking maybe Colt Edge might like it one day, but um, you know, I think they're off, they're off doing other things now, but so we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but uh, I've worked long and hard on it. Um, and, and, and also the, the other idea I had for it was um, Avon gets stranded. He gets kidnapped from the Liberator and he finds himself on this, bleak dark volcanic world where the sun hardly ever rises but the only thing he can see on the horizon as he tries to survive drinking sulfurous volcanic water and eating lizard flesh for mm -hmm. a few days is this tower a few kilometers away with a bright light on the top and obviously he, he heads towards that and all the while he's been harried by these strange mutant andromedans that have been mm -hmm. experimented on in some way but are partly telepathic. So he keeps having these strange visions. So he has a vision of Blake, like mm. almost like Marley's ghost in yeah. a cave, you know? Uh, and so anyway, he makes his way to the tower and there's, who does he find in the tower after murking his way up? He's like, like the classic knight with a sword hacking his way mm. through mm. their serverland is chained up in the tower at the top. And eventually, I won't spoil it because no one's going to read it. <laughs> but, but I was enjoying uh, story time with Martin then. <laughs> eventually, we, we find out who's behind it all. And there is Space Elon in there somewhere. So, nice. you know, wow, here we go. Maybe it's him. Yeah. And, I, I, and then I've projected on from that. And I'm now thinking, like, I could write Vindictus fan fiction for yes. Neil and Lou, right? Because yes. I can, I can, I can, I can see how I could dovetail what I've been thinking about and working on into, into their post data prime universe. Right. Uh, and that what must open what up a lot of doors, you know, yeah. what they've written. That's a great starting point. Absolutely. And they've kind of left Avon alone. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I'm thinking, Ooh, I wonder if you would be <laughs> the things I could do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, nice. Well, it, here we go. Brilliant. Well, yeah. watch this space. There Indeed. Could be, there could be a, a vindictus Martin, collaboration on the uh, on the horizon well, I, yeah I've, I've, i kind of mentioned it to him but who, who knows he's a busy guy <laughs> <laughs> well we we shall hopefully pick all this up more on another podcast i feel yeah, yeah. um team avon or team blake what are you i probably come through loud and clear i'm definitely avon um i mean he's just such a complex character mm. and and blake to me is kind of a boy scout and you kind of always root for the 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 bad the you know the bad guy don't you so well yeah. I do so um so yes definitely Avon I just I, Avon. I, and from an acting perspective you know Darrow was it for me and he had the cool the coolest outfits you know the way he'd hold a gun and put his oh, hand absolutely. you know put his hand over the top of the gun and I try yeah. and put all those little nuances into what I write you know um just to, to again it's like he was we was saying earlier just before we started like you know trying to make it feel like you're watching an episode in your head right that's what you're trying to absolutely as a, as a fanfic writer that's what you want to do isn't it so yeah you know it's just just the way you would move you know uh i mean they were all cool i mean dana i'd love to have seen dana do more with that that thread that she had in her character about you know what she could do with weapons and stuff like that yeah you know that would have been great to see and the whole clip gun thing you know again mm -hmm. there's another story there's another story brewing in my head about sulin and dana uh, and the the in my head the title of the story is for every occasion because 
there's a clip gun round. Yeah, exactly. For, for every, every occasion, occasion right? there was. So, so I'm it's trying out. to put them in it. So I'm trying to work out the story. So we put them somewhere, and in some way, I'm, I'm thinking like there's a beleaguered planet. There's some freedom fighters on the planet fighting against uh, presumably the Federation, and the the ladies find themselves marooned from Scorpio in the middle of this battle, and they've just got clip guns, but they happen to have every round they need nice so, and i'm thinking like do we make it like a maze they're waking their way through, through a maze oh, that might be a good game new on roblox who knows that sounds but, uh, sounds good so i'm loving this i might steal this one you know? yeah but but because we never saw that did we, we no we did. Such, imagine we, the pairing of them two as well i think it would be it oh, would be a high degree of blood bar. what a team we'll right? going, yeah exactly we'll going down imagine like i always go back to judge dread as well like high x and yeah. imagine imagine sulin and dana shooting an armoured vehicle with the clip guns yeah. and just melting a bunch of Federation troopers jumping out the top of the tank. Right, imagine that. How cool would that be? I always think back to the fact that, you know, Dane is, Dane is this person that knows, you know, there's nothing she doesn't know about guns or weapons, right? You yeah. Know, they stab yeah. that quite hard. You know, the fact that when she, she picks up that clip gun for the first time and says to Avon, these are the best I've ever seen, mm. you know, and bearing in mind, like, she's handled like the Liberator guns that are clearly pretty beefy. You know, yeah. I always think, like you say, there was more to be done, and they sound so yeah. great. The clip guns when they fire, I love that. Yeah, love and that's the difference that between use. show running back then, because I guess Chris Boucher would have been the equivalent of a modern day showrunner. He was yeah. like your, your, you know, if we're looking yeah. at modern modern Doctor Who, he was your Russell T Davies of of Blake's back then, wasn't he? he was. And it's just it's kind of like you know, it it sort of you know, if it had been me doing it, you you kind of would have given some guidance to the writers. But you know, it's just kind of like make sure you fit this in. But obviously, it was it was budget. It was they, they were just trying to do a job and get a show out, right? Weren't they? And, Absolutely. And it, and, it, and, it, and it never happened. And again, that's why you have the varying quality, right, of the different stories and things like that. But there's always something to love in everything, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. there is. There is. So, what's the favourite episode for you then? So, favourite for me is uh, Rumours of Death. I would say. Good. That cool. that whole speech from Serverland about it being an old war and it waits mm. to me is almost Shakespearean. Mm. I mean, it's brilliant writing. It's fantastic, and yeah, that that is that is the one for me. And the whole the whole uh, interrogation bit at the beginning and the way yeah, they, I love they, that. They, they switch they switch it up on him and um, yeah. and 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 it's uh, yeah that that is the one for me. That's a great exemplary episode. If again, it's it's like you always say, you know what episode would you show to a non-fan to get yeah. them interested in the show? And I think, you know, that's got enough meat to it to, to do that, you know? It so yeah. and it's always, it's always marveled me that beginning, that opening scene for me is, is if I was to show someone why Darrow is incredible, it's yeah. that whole, the whole range he shows in that cell bit from beginning to end, but it's yeah. how haggard he makes himself look. I've yep. never quite figured out how they managed to make him look so. He looks wretched. And <laughs> and it's not your obvious BBC makeup either. It's his posture. It's the way, you know, just not shaving, you know, but it just <laughs> looks. I can believe Darrow's been tortured for five days. You know, he looks, yeah. he looks awful, poor fella. And then but, all so of a what, sudden it switched. Yeah. He switches and takes control mm. of the situation. Brilliant. Mm. Absolutely mm. brilliant. So what's your least favourite episode then? I've, I've been thinking about this one, and there, obviously there are many candidates, <laughs> that, that, as many fans will know, but I think I'm going to choose, for the sake of this, I'm going to choose Assassin. Okay. Um, because, it's, a first mention. it's a first mention for Assassin. Yeah, it is a letdown. I mean, the the, the whole, I mean, it's, it's a bit of an obvious twist that, you know, that guy's not cancer. <laughs> That's... Come on, um, I think he looks ridiculous. <laughs> um, and and the, yeah, the whole screaming woman thing. And, oh, oh, it's, oh, there's no, um, but I mean, again, there's things to love. It was a cool ship, cancer cool ship, ship. It, was, it was a cool ship, um, you know, but yeah, for, as a script, it doesn't really hang together for me very well. Um, so yeah, assassin is the one I would assassinate. <laughs> And Liberator or Scorpio, which one are you? Oh, of course, Season D guy, right? It's got to be, yeah, it's got to be Scorpio. Got to be. Like I said, for me, it is the Falcon of the series. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously you can see the constraints they were working in. With Liberator, they had a few more sets, mm. right? With, with Scorpio, we basically had the one set. Mm. And, they'd, and they'd made that decision that we're going to focus it all on here. And actually, they cleverly kind of worked that in by saying, you know, this is the only bit of the ship that's really pressurised. Yeah. During yeah. flight, right? So, which is fair enough. 
I mean, the whole landing sequence, all that model work. Mm. I remember being totally blown away by that when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, it, it was fantastic. Uh, we never got a Corgi um, Scorpio. No, we didn't. There's a great bit in the, the 1982 annual in there that someone's done like a the advert for like stuff we yeah. never got. And there's a, a fake Corgi. And when I opened that page, I, man, I would have loved that. Yeah, we would have Corgi Scorpio. Yeah. I had a, I had a, uh, obviously I had a Corgi Liberator. I remember that. Uh, and everyone used to chew the the, the uh, neutron yeah, blaster. Got, yep, yeah. I've got one up there, mate. Exactly, exactly in the condition Jude, you described. Jude. <laughs> um, but a mate of mine, a mate of mine named his son Blake uh, when oh. he when he when he was born. Uh, I don't think it was series related. I think I just genuinely liked the name. Yeah. Um, but I was waiting for him to turn seven for <laughs> <laughs> for seven years, and I bought him a I bought him a Corgi Liberator. We put it in a little little plastic display case and. And, and and wrote a little uh you know awesome. uh, description of what it was so maybe when he grows up he, he, he might actually be flicking through brit box or something one day and that might spark a memory and maybe yeah. a new a new fan a new fan, will be new fan will be born oh brilliant yeah. let's hope that so planting great. the seeds for the future planting seeds and we've all done it i mean i tried to brainwash all my kids and didn't always stick i must say sadly but there we oh. go so travis one or travis two which are you <sighs> again this is one of those things that really annoys me recasting people um mm. i think because because travis travis too was also in eastenders wasn't he yeah and it, and it and we go from this kind of you can imagine that travis is an officer he's kind mm. of he's kind of posh he's officer class yep. he's yep. been through the academy or what the equivalent whatever the equivalent of it was and he's you know he's done that he's done the time and he's worked his way up and then all of a sudden we've got like a barra boy Running around <laughs> in an eye patch, and no, you know, Brian, it's Brian Croucher, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, the actor. No, no disrespect to him. And actually, there was that little audio, wasn't there? I forget what it was called, but I, I listened to it recently. Um, that that had been done, and Brian Croucher's in there, and and basically, you can. This guy's unhinged, you know. By this point, Travis is, has completely lost it, um, and so you know, I've got respect for for the work that he did in the in the show and, and the and the acting that he did but just for me it, again it comes down to like you know what what were they doing as from a show running perspective making that decision you could have absolutely uh, with the, you could have written travis out and switched to another space commander or someone someone different you know didn't need to be a continuation really did it for for what the stories needed but um but yeah so definitely i would say travis one is is the answer to your question so, matey, now we get to one of my favourites. Everybody knows I love this one, right? There's gunfire, bloodbath, people dropping like flies. It's Gowda Prime. Who makes it out? Does anybody make it out? What what happens in Martin Cannon? God, we've all got our own personal cannon, haven't we? Um, that's what I love about this. Um, <laughs> so, I, being such an Avon fan, right? I I I think that that Avon was such a, I don't know. Uh, I think he was the kind of guy that would want to make sure he survived, right? He, I always think of him as the living embodiment of Darwinian theory, right? Mm -hmm. he, he will only act, he will only do something if it's to his advantage at the end of the day, you know, and that's why, that's why he survived for so long. That's why he's still, he's still alive at that point. Because you imagine they've been hunted for however many years the, the mm -hmm. series is supposed to span by the elite of, you know, the, the federation so i it's controversial right but i i think after the it goes black and we hear the gunfire i think i think avon walked out of there I, yeah. I think he would have had a plan b um and again you know something that's in my head is is what that plan b was and uh i was probably drunk texting neil a little while ago because <laughs> my my thing my blake seven thing is friday nights Right. Yeah. It's it it's a it's a it's a bag of crisps, and it's a couple of beers, and a, and it's Brit box, and everyone else has gone to bed. It's late at night. It's like gone at half eleven. Great Graham, Graham Norton's a distant memory, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm and I'm and I'm watching Blake Seven wherever I've got to, and you know invariably I'll I'll end up messaging Neil about what I'm watching and stuff like that. And I think I sent him one the other week about like my theory of what happened to Avon. Uh, and again, you know, if we, if, if we can do Vindictus fan fiction, then uh, maybe we can work mm, that in. Um, you know, 
like the, the the only thing in my head at the minute is is I, I figured out what how he survived, but the Orac knows more than he'd tell about Project Nova. Ooh. Right. Uh and uh, um yeah, so Orac would be the key to unlocking. And and you know, if it was a new series and v- the Vindictors novel is season one, yeah. season two, the arc in season two, you know, if I was show running it, would be Where's Avon? What happened? Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, so, oh, this and, is and exciting, buddy. You know, Reckon and this. it was the guy, the guy that did. I remember reading something in Doctor Who magazine a few years ago. The guy that did uh, Life on Mars and Ashes to Ashes, his name completely escapes me, but he was talking about Blake Seven and talking about how he was fascinated by the character of Avon, and he always saw in a reboot that Avon had been kind of like banished and exiled and was in mm. like this Napoleon figure somewhere and that idea really resonates with me that he, he would have survived in some way um and the guy was a computer genius and orax and ai right so mm. i'm just saying yeah yeah <laughs> i don't think that avon was absolutely obsessed with finding blake i think he was a means to an end like mm-hmm. i say you know he would only do something if it's going to benefit him right so and we know there was a he was trying to build that alliance and um and really finally deal a death blow to Serverland and the Federation, right? Which is all good. And, uh, but Blake's Blake's hubris, right? I mean, to me, uh, oh God, I'm, I'm terrible on episode titles. What's the name of the episode where they go and go to control and he thinks he's found Star One? Pressure Point. What, that's the one, right? Yeah. The one where they're shooting, where they're shooting yeah, the, yeah. The, the, thing, the thing in the floor. Yeah. That one. So in that one, there's the scene where they burst in and Blake's yeah. in the front with his, and he says, I've done it. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, we. Can <laughs> that, that's like to me. That's like that is totally indicative of his of his hubris and his mm. his own. You know, he's yeah. So you know what I mean. So yeah. And and that whole and that's the reason why he ended up with his stomach shot out because because <laughs> he'd done this elaborate elaborate silly thing with the whole mm. bounty hunter bit and the. And and it, and it and it backfired on him at the end of the day, you know. And it, and you know, yeah. humour me. He's saying to, what's his face? Um, and um, yeah, it's kind of, you know, he kind of got what he deserved there. I think, you know. And it, but yeah, I think yeah, Avon would have had a plan B. Avon and I like your idea of him slow, slowly, slowly backing out. And that weapon, we- yeah. that weapon first first appears like an episode or two back, doesn't it? And obviously, it was the perfect gun for. Uh, for that final scene, wasn't it? Yeah. Rather than him having a clip gun. Yeah, and stage. he's still got, I always thought as well, if you look obviously closer at him, he's still got his clip gun in his jacket as well. So I always yeah. imagined a bit of a, you know, he's got that in one hand, clip gun in the other. Yeah. What an amazing scene that would have been. You know, Avon. Yeah. Just... He was a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hard light hologram. I don't know. <laughs> hologram. It's all got red dwarf suddenly. Um, yeah. And what's your Blake Seven wish? If you could grant us one wish, is it shiny Blu rays? Is it reboots? Is it sequels? Action figures. What, what what would you give us, Martin? Disney money. Disney money. I would give. I would give all the lovely people listening to this a a shot from Disney. I mean, Disney seem to be plundering. I mean, no, <laughs> there's, there's the deal. There's the deal with Doctor Who, right? Yep. Um. The, the I mean, look at Andor, right? Andor yeah. is Blake Seven, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I was. We a lot of us were struck by the similarities yeah. of the show, In, including one of the props even appearing. Oh it. really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to share a, a picture. There, there's a oh. scene where he's walking down a corridor, and on the wall, there's like a speaker, a communications type speaker, and it's the same oh. ones that appear in like the London, um, on board the Ortega in various episodes. But it's, it is the same oh. thing. And and those yeah. guys, I forget the name yeah. of the, the, the name of the showrunner and writer again. I'm terrible with names. I'm sorry, but um, they've obviously been hugely influenced by gritty British. It's not all shiny. Yeah. This is how it. This is how it would be, and that's that's the DNA of Blake Seven, right? You know, if only it had had Disney money, right? Disney or money. if only it had had a, a a Russell T Davis reboot, or a uh, you know the 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 Ashes to Ashes guy whose name I can't still can't remember Graham somebody is it? You know, right. if if only he could have rebooted it, right? Yeah. Um, I think you know that would be my wish is is that is that um, you know they see the potential in the series 
Um, and I, I'm never for reboots. I would I would always prefer a continuation. I'll, something I'll like you on that. Something, you know, something like Vindictors. I think the way they handled yeah. Doctor Who, you know, was fantastic. It was it was it was brilliantly executed and made the BBC lots of money and hopefully will continue to do so for many more years to come. We all love the we all love it, right? Um, uh, and that, and there's so much more potential. I mean, look at what could Jamie Anderson do with Disney money, right? Mm. In terms of uh, in terms of some of those. Yeah. properties that he's that, that his dad generated right absolutely i mean one, one of the things that i was doing a i did a ufo watch through before i came back to blake seven and like again during lockdown ufo is amazing UFO. i love ufo I, and, and i didn't really i mean because it was a one of the 90s repeats from bbc2 god bless him and i remember sitting and watching it with my dad and we would laugh mm. about commander straker and all of that good stuff and uh, but actually, when I sat and watched it again Friday night, bag of crisps, cut the beers, uh, it's awesome. I mm. loved it so much. Um, and again, it's one of those properties, one of those things that could be continued. I mean, it was supposed to be, you know, Space 1999 was going to be a continuation of UFO originally, wasn't it? But then it it changed and, you know, there's more of an American audience involved at, at that point. But, but uh, yeah, so, so much about Sapphire and Steel. All that good stuff that used to scare mm. us witless as kids, <laughs> yeah. you know, all the all the stuff that Big Finish has, has admirably kept alive. Yeah, as well. absolutely. Kept, kept kept the flame burning. You know, all of that is there's so much potential in in British sci-fi. Uh, so yeah. Disney money is what I would Disney give money. everybody, and a, and a brand new Liberator 3D model. You know, there's so much more to explore in the Blake's universe, isn't there? So absolutely. much more that we didn't there get is. to see. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and let's hope, like you say, that the guys over at Vindictus, that this is the start of things. Um, I know you're on board with that and we'll we'll talk a bit more about it. If you'll come back next time, we'll, we'll pick things up and we'll, we'll yeah. take this conversation a little bit further. But for Indeed, now, matey, a thousand thank yous for, for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you to you guys for continuing to listen. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>